difference. So if I'm using a slightly clickbaity title-ish for this one, I hope you forgive me. When I say you can't fix your friends, I, I mean more like you can't necessarily help all of your friends all the time and they might actively reject your help. Anyway, that's a generalization. So I'm going to talk about my experience, right? Um, so over the past decade or so, I have worked really hard to identify my own issues. Actually, before you keep going, I just wanted to jump in. Um, just to say that <laughs> I've noticed this myself as well. Um, and it's always been something I've wondered about, you know, whether to push uh, my ideas and my beliefs onto those around me uh, or whether to kind of keep them to myself and and you know even being on Twitter is like a, is one version of of finding an outlet to talk about the things that I'm whatever passionate about or obsessed with so that that I don't have to uh, just beleaguer my friends and family uh, with that stuff so yeah it's kind of funny I found my way to Twitter thanks to you uh, Visa and and uh, I think it's also been uh, a really good thing and a benefit for all the people in my real life so thank you and work through them and deal with them and I've gotten pretty good at it you know, I wouldn't say I'm a master but like I've gotten pretty good at it relative to where I speak and I regularly get DMs on Twitter particularly from people who are struggling with their own issues and I talk to them ask them questions give them little nudges you know I don't tell them what to do specifically but it's more of like I'm asking them questions that will help guide them and very often a few weeks later or a few months this may be a little bit of an aside or a different direction, but I've heard you say this before, and it's always been really interesting to hear that uh, that people will reach out to you in that way. And I think it's uh, it's just a, it's a good example of something I tweeted just the other day about how good copywriting or copywriting at its best is just talking to people and you know you've been on twitter for however many years talking about yourself and working through your own problems um not trying to convince anyone of anything necessarily um at least not in the in the sense of like having one defined marketing objective that you're just hammering at day in and day out, right? And as a product of doing that, as a product of talking and talking to people, sharing your own issues and how you're working through them and your successes and your failures, people feel one, they feel safe with you, they feel heard, they feel like you understand them, and without you necessarily prompting it, they seek out your help and yeah you could do a lot of things with that and you could also not do anything with that that's just I just wanted to point it out even for myself uh, so that I can think about it more later but yeah I've always I've always been interested in that non non whenever you mentioned it later they get back to me and they tell me that like they've achieved results like they have you know gotten outcomes that they wanted or they've uh, stopped feeling so shitty or just good things happen right and well okay one further thought on that it's like I don't think that you necessarily have ever or you certainly don't haven't formalized like paid coaching uh, but <laughs> what you're saying is effectively that you did you do that you just do it for free in your DMs you know um, and it's helping people and it's wonderful so it's really cool I've never DM'd you I don't think but you've helped me
It's amazing. That's something that I'm very honored to be a part of. Very um, eager to do more of for more people, right? Because it's it's literally relief from pain and suffering in some ways. And so I have friends, right? And I can see that my friends are struggling in similar ways sometimes, and they talk about their problems, and I feel compelled to offer help. You know, I wouldn't say I necessarily offer solutions. I don't think that works. But, you know, I kind of see them. They look like they are sort of asking for help, right? Or you know, it's implicit stuff. So it's, it's tricky because you're kind of evaluating what's going on and trying to make sense of it. But my sense is that some of my friends need help. And I feel obliged as a friend to try and help. And sometimes... I know you're going to keep going into this. This is an, an, an actual conversation between us it's a parasocial conversation if there ever was one um but yeah what a fascinating topic this dance between or dance around like noticing when people need help when they want help um like you're saying you know you sometimes can recognize that a person needs it and maybe even wants it to some degree um, and yet simply noticing that doesn't mean that they will be receptive to help and I think I'm jumping ahead and, and putting words in your mouth but that's definitely something I've experienced um, with people, friends, family, um, significant others, so maybe I'll I'll say more about that if if it seems relevant based on what you're saying. This works out great, but sometimes it works out horribly. And uh, when, I, when I say horribly, I mean the, here's my interpretation, right? And this could be wrong, but this is how I interpret it. I think sometimes people are just not ready to address some particular problem that they're dealing with like they just need to express that they just need to describe it right and and they are on a journey to eventually solve it but they are not ready to solve it and it's very important i'm learning that i not put pressure on them that i don't you know I mean, I would say there's, there's like this level one version of it that I dealt with when I was like a teenager, which is that I should never be needy for my friends to solve their problems. I should never imply... Okay, you're going somewhere else with this. So before you do, I want to jump in again. Um, yeah, just to say that it's such an interesting... <laughs> I keep saying this. It's such an interesting dance, whatever. Uh, between noticing, again, when people may need and even want help, and when is it appropriate or even effective to offer them help. And I know for me, in my own relationships, and I've seen, in, for example, my parents, something that happens often is, is one person will have a, a quote-unquote problem and they'll express it possibly for the first time so they've never articulated it before but it's it's a kind of burning in them and they'll express it to their partner and the partner I've done this and I've had it done to me rather than just hearing the problem will jump to trying to solve it, right? And speaking from my own experience, that is really, for me anyway, really, uh, I don't like it, you know? It, it, I, I almost instantly put up defenses. I've been in relationships where when this has happened, when I've tried to articulate a problem, and had the person jump to attempting to solve the problem, it just instantly puts me on the defense. And suddenly, there's no relating going on anymore. 
um, I suddenly feel like I'm not being heard. So I start to resent the other person. You know, <laughs> like they're trying to solve my problem in a way, which is nice in in some senses. But they're doing it too early, right? And as a result, I get frustrated and I get defensive and I feel unheard. And then they feel like, what the hell's going on? And then they get frustrated that I get frustrated, right? And then you just this has been this has been the source of so many arguments. Um, yeah, so I could say much more about that, but I, I'm ranting. This is not the forum for that. So I want to hear what you got to say. Is that my friend's problems are things that I cannot kind of uh, accept? There, there's nuance here, you know, because. Um, you know, I, I think I'm an extreme case where, where your friend is being shitty, like being a shitty person, and they're like kind of being selfish and cruel to other people or the, to, the, to themselves even, and you don't want to tolerate that because then you become an enabler. So you don't want to enable your friend's bullshit. And there is a way to not enable your friend's bullshit without subjecting them to your own bullshit. I would be curious, what's an example of that, of enabling your friend's bullshit, because nothing immediately comes to mind for me in terms of concrete uh, occasions of that happening. So, if you were to listen to this, what would you say? What's a concrete example of that? All right, let's go. Which is to then, you know, kind of be pushy, be angry, be grumpy and sort of demand that they improve in some way, right? Because that is its own kind of selfishness in a sense. So it's, it's very tricky. It depends on the circumstance, right? No, no two situations are the same. But, you know, um, as I've grown and developed and become more skilled at what I do and more perceptive, I increasingly find it difficult to, you know, tolerate what I perceive to be people being shitty, right? And which isn't to say pass judgment on them in some kind of moral way, like you guys are bad people and I'm a good person and I'm... Okay, so if, if what you're talking about is simply seeing someone be shitty, seeing somebody do things that are mean or inappropriate or what have you yeah I guess I mean there's a couple there's a variety of responses you could have one is to say nothing is that what you mean by enable another response could be it could be um, calling them out right and saying like, hey, you're being shitty, what are you doing? Uh, and kind of leaving it at that. And then another response, but not the last type of response by any means, but another response could be being like, hey, you are being shitty. Why are you being shitty? Let me help you solve that let me attempt to change your behavior and that certainly seems like an occasion where people are going to say fuck off dude i need to be a good person too um but i i do want to associate with good people right and i do want to you know, I have my own mission in life. I have my own goals, things that I want. And I can be nice to everyone. You know, I can be friend. I can be on, like, pleasant terms with everyone. But it's very difficult to respect someone who doesn't take responsibility for their life and doesn't, you know, um, make an active effort to try and at least address their issues. And so over time, it becomes difficult to 
to relate to these people, right? That you consider your friends because you have so much shared experience and whatnot, but you're on a different trajectory. And it seems to me that what I have to do is accept that. You know, and I, when I look back at the past year or so of my life, I think I have sometimes... So more subtly than when I was a teenager. So when I was a teenager, I... Okay, I'm maybe going to put words in your mouth, but what's hitting me or the, the, the issues that, that's coming up for me in hearing you say that is just the, the, the possibility of, of uh, losing friends, right? Having people in your life who you care about, who you love, and losing them for whatever reason. And the difficulty and the challenge of dealing with, with that. Like, do you let them go? Do you hold on to them and, and try to help them fix themselves so that you don't have to lose them? That's a hard thing. I am going through something like that, I suppose, at the moment, and yeah, I'm not, I'm not going to go into any details, Th that's not appropriate for this, but yeah, very difficult, very challenging, because you want, <laughs> you want them to be in your life, actually, uh, something this reminds me of is, is realizing recently just that times when you lose somebody in your life for whatever reason let's let's r rule out death as a reason but when you lose a relationship how painful that can be but also <laughs> if you let it how fucking insanely transformative that can be because it just highlights so so much about who you are and what you want in your life and what you what and who you want to be and what and who you don't want to be and if you really like take the time to reflect on that stuff holy shit I think that can be one of the probably one of the most life changing experiences in a good way uh, which is weird to say because for the most part it's just painful as shit I had no subtlety whatsoever I would literally get in my friends faces and you know call them names and, and, and ter terrible shit we, we were all idiots when we were teenagers as adults um, I'm no longer going to do that but even so you know even in the small interactions and exchanges that you have with your friends you can kind of nudge conversations in one direction or another, right? You can nudge the conversation towards responsibility and accountability and so on, or you can nudge it towards kind of validating people's complaints. And, you know, there's some people say, you know, don't try and solve people's problems, just, just affirm their feelings. That's a part of that. There's some nuance there, but, you know, once you've affirmed their feelings several times, then what? You know, if a person just keeps complaining about things and not doesn't do anything about the situation then what are you going to do right? and if you linger there too long you know it rubs off on you and eventually you become you know because social contagion is real and we, we pick up on the social norms of our friends and so over time if you have some kind of vision for yourself and the people in your life are you know not in resonance with that vision that you have for yourself then you have to ask yourself the question of which is more important to you, right? And it's perfectly fine for people to say, oh, you know, my vision is just... Man, I just... I, I, I know I'm cutting you off, but... Yeah, it's, just, it's funny to hear this idea coming from you because articulated in a different way, it's, it's so much more common to hear it from, like, really, really intense self-help uh, kind of people, you know, who are like, you know, they'll, they'll say things like about how you're the average of the five people you spend your time around most, 
and how like if the people around you aren't serving you and supporting you then you should cut them out of your life like in this really aggressive violent way like fuck them if they're not helping you go towards your goals right um and that's always rubbed me the wrong way though there have been times in my life when i when i have resonated with that sort of thing but yeah so there's a degree to which you're saying something similar but i think it's coming from a very very different place um I'm obviously interpreting you in my own way and projecting my ideas of you and your ideas, but, um, yeah, it just comes down to, like, knowing what you want and balancing that against your relationships, and there's no right answer, yeah, there's no right answer. But the one one extreme is just knowing what you want and like letting nobody get in the way of that. And if they start to quote unquote hold you back from it, then just deleting them. That's one extreme. And the other extreme is really having no sense of what you want, having no vision, and just sort of floating in that little social web and having that carry you forward somewhere but not really knowing where, right? And sort of unconsciously being the average of those people. But yeah, so it's always a balance and there's no right answer. I want to be with my friends. And if my friends socialize by complaining about things that they don't want to do anything about, then that's the environment that I'm going to be in. But if... You are burdened with, you know, the knowledge that you could be more and do more and help more people and all those things, and that just seems like the right way for you to be. It's just real quick. So interesting that you use the word burdened. I wonder what is behind that. If you are burdened with the understanding or the knowledge that you want to do and be more, why burden? Then you're gonna have to accept that your friendships are lim- uh, limited you know they're, they're not long for this world in a sense there's, there's a there's a half life to the amount of time you have left with some friends based on the circumstances that you're in and the context that you're in and so on so i guess this video is just me meditating on the fact that as i grow and I will lose some friends, people that I love very much and and care about, but people who are kind of committed to staying in a certain domain, certain context, like, you know, they're not going to go on the adventures that I intend to go on, and so they are going to kind of linger in the village tavern and have a good time there, and, you know, I wish them well, I wish them a good life, I hope they're happy, Uh, but I, I won't be happy lingering in the tavern with them, and so I have to go off again on my next adventure that is what my heart wants and there is a grief in that and I have to accept that and I know that I will make new friends you know on the road right what you're saying is you know it's about friends but it's so clearly analogous maybe even more than analogous to romantic relationships Um, yeah, it's like you're talking about breaking up with friends and that's not talked about very often and it's not often articulated like that so knowing how to approach it is is hard no one really gives any guidance there do you just let friends drift away you know, that's certainly not how it tends to happen with romantic relationships. If you get to a point where one of you or both of you are growing apart, you don't just drift apart. For the, Usually, uh, I don't know. <laughs> not in my experience and not in the experience of any of the friends and family that I have known to go through separations. But yeah, like... What does a friend breakup look like? Do you 
call them and tell them like, hey, this isn't working out. I think I need to move on. <laughs> like, or, or what, you know? And I'm not asking like, as if you have all those answers, but just kind of a open question for myself, for you, for anyone who hears this. Yeah. How do you go about breaking up with friends? Or is that even the wrong paradigm? Or the right paradigm? To think about it. And, uh, yeah. So I just wanted to share that in, in case that resonates with anybody else. And I don't think there's, like, easy answers or solutions. I don't think there's, like, a, oh, just do this and you'll be fine. You know, it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt. Whichever choice you make, whether you choose to dim your vision and, and suppress your vision and stay stay with your social group, or you choose to, you know, strike it out on your own. And some of your friends will be happy for you. Some of your friends will be mad at you because they'll be like, oh, do you think you're better than us? No, I don't think I'm better than other people. It's just that I'm different, you know. <laughs> it's funny cutting you off there. I'm not better than you. I'm just different. Um, so often that's said with the implication that, no, I am better than you, but... Um, the the reason I, was, I stopped you was just I wanted to say how, you know, even with breakups, it isn't necessary or essential to the end of a romantic relationship that that you stop caring about and supporting each other, right? So, similarly with friends, like, you can kind of stop being friends with somebody but that doesn't mean that you resent them um, suddenly like you can still love them and you can still hope the best for them um, so that's interesting and then also you, men you mentioned the pain and you mentioned grief and like yeah absolutely I would imagine, I would imagine, because I haven't really gone through any big friend breakups, but yeah, there's got, there's a grief process, you know, it's a maxim that I live by anyway when it comes to romantic relationships, that, that yeah, you should kind of wait to move on until you've grieved, um, until you've grieved the relationship that you just lost because hmm, I think I'll have to work on articulating what I'm about to say next but before you grieve if you don't let out the pain or you don't like acknowledge the pain or if you don't I'm thinking of um the whole Nadera process, right? The whole Sob Squad, Doug's work, um, like crying things out and really experiencing the grief of something allows you to move on in a way that is next to impossible if you don't do that. And so when it comes to friends, I see no reason why it wouldn't work the same. We just tend not to look at it that way. So it would be interesting to, to think more for myself, to think more about what it would look like and when is it appropriate to grieve the loss of a friendship. And again, I'm not talking about having a friend die here. I'm just talking about moving on. So, and And what happens... And how does it shape your future friendships if you don't grieve the ones that you lost? So, again, open question. And I, I don't... Sorry, man, it's just the way I am. And I almost... Some, a part of me wishes this wasn't the case, but when I meditate and, and reflect on it, I'm like, um, the my, my obligation to my child self and to everything else is just too great for me to, to suppress it further. And I think once I accept this, I will be able to relate to people in a gentler way, right? So rather than being pushy at people saying that you need to change, 
you can be whoever you want. I accept you for who you are. But this is where I'm going. And if you're not coming with me, then we can be acquaintances, but we can't be, you know, peers. There's no kinship there. Yeah, much to think about. Done. So that was interesting. You just used some terms that I think really help the distinctions here, like acquaintances, peers, kinship, right? Like I was saying, you can end a relationship, but that doesn't mean you have to stop caring about loving and supporting that person. Um, And yeah, so, you know, what does that mean? You are no longer peers, maybe. There's no longer kinship between you. And that just, yeah, that... Mm. So what is kinship exactly? That's a interesting rabbit hole to go down. Um, but now that you're done, I want to wrap this up. Um, I just thought it was really interesting at the end that you mentioned, like, your inner child and, and how powerful of a... A paradigm that is with which to look at this whole issue, right? And like, if you were to imagine yourself uh, as a parent and you have a kid, you know, whatever, six years old, seven years old, however, however young, and they have a friend who they're not getting along with anymore, and they have their own desires and they have some kind of vision for how they want to be, you know, we're talking about your kids still, then how would you deal with that? Like, how would you help them approach that friendship of theirs, which is no longer really working out for them, you know? And I think that might make us, that might make the answers clearer than any other paradigm you know because I think it would be weird to answer that to be like okay my child is in this friendship which isn't working for him anymore and he wants to go this other direction with his life and pursue these other interests but no I'm going to force him to remain friends with this kid right like that that seems wrong Um, if it doesn't seem at least strange to you or anyone listening then I'd love to hear why not because to me it absolutely does so yeah cool that was fun